Welcome back to the Meeple Marathon and our continued coverage of Cloud Spire, focusing on the Horizons Wrath solo campaign. This is the third scenario in the four uh, scenario campaign. This is Hall the Bow Hall the Bowline, um, and this is against the Narora faction, who are very tough. They're very diverse, very complicated faction. Um, but essentially, they have these they have these towers along the outside, which are connected, which means they can actually roll an amount of spire dice based on how many that are out on the board with the keyword connected. So at the moment, each one of these, if you get in range, is rolling four. And then they have these aspect towers here, and this is your focus for this mission. Last mission, it was you know going and tracking down that double source well and dragging it back to your ship with the lifeboat here it's more um, reducing these two aspect towers which don't really do much on their own um, but they have been beefed up for this specific scenario including they've been given health chips which are just considered upgrades um, but don't really do anything what's nice and what's a critical thing to remember when being successful in this scenario is that anytime you damage these two towers here you can choose which upgrade to remove um, so you can essentially remove uh, these two uh, attack chips off the top and then focus on the health chips because ironically you cannot defeat these aspect towers entirely you have to just reduce them down reduce all their health chips down but leave at least one other upgrade chip on them so they're not destroyed I guess then you're wanting to I think if I remember correctly the the narrative is that you're like pumping the source out of these um, so that is the objective or the main objective is to reduce these to reduce their health chips down to zero also one of them is to only choose one um, unit from the market that's that's again that's very simple that's another one that it's like i could easily do that um and the last one is which is a little you know more interesting is you have to fire a cannon ball from each of your four cannons so um let's first talk about how we can you know there's a lot of firepower in their spires right now how can we reduce them down and give us a chance to start picking away at these two in the the waves to come so this is what I've come up with works the best for wave one so you have five CP you're going to group together a powder monkey with a glider over top and a swabby over top and then of course we have miss Bane we're gonna put him on the bottom he's gonna kind of saunter out here at his leisure and there should be a, a chip there um, his objective is to simply take care of this landmark so we can a hopefully earn a little source and B also possibly build um, do a limited build of a tower right here depending on how much source we can get from here so that's really his only objective but what this essentially works out to almost every time is since you're grouping them together the swabby makes it here and these guys aren't quite in range they can reach to this hex so the swabby is safe but then as soon as the next wave and we're not even gonna worry about the drift you know that you can have the drift slowly come around this way um, they're gonna go one two here now they're in range of this tower right here and so it's rolling two dice more than likely it's gonna take care of this swabby um, you at this point probably don't have any source so you're probably gonna lose him that's okay and you could um, upgrade the glider you don't need to um, I don't know if you have to up I think it's optional so either way um, you now have the glider grouped with the powder monkey and again they can't really attack at this point so the drift are still moving the next way or the next turn you either need to go one two three or if you have decided to flip them over again it really doesn't matter one two three four you're still advancing closer to the opposing fortress gate and you're making your maximum movement which is important for the glider but since the glider is grouped it also has to stay on the path at this point you're now adjacent to these both of these towers which are connected so technically you know they're rolling like eight dice at you um, which is almost certainly going to take out your glider but that's fine the whole purpose of the glider was to get it get your powder monkey in close to this tower right here 
your powder monkey can then attack and remove the range chip off of this one tower. Now this spot is safe and that's going to be important for the future. Again, the drift continue to move and your next turn you're going to move right here. Again, you have gotten adjacent here. They're rolling four dice against you. More than likely you're going to be killed off, but that's what you wanted. You want to detonate to happen and that way you can remove, since you get to choose, the two orange chips from um, the both aspects towers. So now essentially both of these have been rendered completely useless. They have range, um, but they have no attack. The health chips are don't offer any attack or anything like that. They're just simply there. So for the rest of this scenario, you can simply chip away at these. Just make sure you chip away at them evenly because if at any point at the end of a wave, if one of them is taller than the other, essentially then you lose. So assuming that, you know, Miss Bane came out here and, you know, took care of this guy or even, you know, revealed this guy and left him open and the drift come and work their way and deal with this and maybe probably put some damage on your force gate. More than likely you're going to survive um, towards the end. Those guys are going to go back in. And um, what now do we want to focus on for wave two? Well, we want to a you know probably get to the point where you can put a tower right here just to protect your gate. Also, we want to make sure that we can chip away at our aspect towers evenly so what we want the best obviously for us to do that is a gunner and once we get rid of the swabby we can use it to promote the gunner and they now have three range which will help us evenly attack both of these every other turn but also we kind of want to deal with this tower here so that this entire path now will be safe so what i've done is i've taken a swabby put him on top of a powder monkey and then separated them you know, so it would look like this um, from your gunner. That way, at the beginning, you're going to come out here. Your gunner is going to look like this. And then this guy's going to go one, two, and one, two. Uh, hopefully, at this point, maybe you have uh, done something about the tracks or loner here. Um, so let's just assume he's not there. At this point, the gunner can hit this tower with no retaliation. Then this swabby can go. Well, oh yeah, it was one, two to right here, and this guy's going here. They can again hit this. If you've kind of done the math and figured out, more than likely you should be able to get two hits on this aspect tower. Because this monolith, with its one range now, or monolith, can attack your swabby, leaving your powder monkey able to go one, two in the next round. And this girl's going to go one, two. The powder monkey will more than likely be detonated by these two guys. This has three range. So, uh, I mean, three health at this point since you promoted her. So even though the powder monkey is going to detonate this out of existence and you know this down to one, she'll still have one health left. She can take her um, second hit here. And um, you know, then her next turn, she will be in range of this thing. So at this point, you might have to have Miss Bane prepared to run up and, and take a shot at like this top tower. You also could completely ignore these guys now and move like your powder monkey, I think, if you want one too. Yeah, your powder monkey would end up there and you could easily just chip away two at a time. Boom, boom. Then here, almost certainly this is gonna detonate the powder monkey, but it'll take away this tower's teeth Again, your gunner will be left with three health, and then eventually will probably die somewhere around here. So at this point, um, you almost always wanna have one of your gunners come out in all of your future waves, so they can take shots at the aspect tower. Uh, ideally, use a swabby if available to promote them, just so they can reach even further. And the last thing I wanna point out in being successful with this scenario is the use of your cannonballs. And starting in wave three, the Narara um, units get a lot tougher but um, you definitely at some point want to purchase your first cannon upgrade which are going to be these two cannons right here and if you trace the line here you can see that this whole row right here you can attack with this one and this whole one right here 
you can attack with this one. So you can, if you stock up on cannonballs, you can easily start taking out people as they first come out of their fortress and have to go right or left around this monolith here. You can easily crush them. And then later on in the game, say one one's here or here, you can fire from that cannon. And if they're in this row, you can fire from that cannon. So make use of your cannons that can fire way down this alleyway. Um, again, that's assuming you don't have a tower here, but um, certainly this one to help you reduce down the health and the intensity of the Marara that are coming at you. Because once you get these down to just their single range chip, unless one of the event die has you add something to it, you can just ignore them and basically just defend your fortress gate at that point. Um, so that's it. Um, it should be pretty straightforward. Again, uh, you know, dice rolls and things like that with your cannonballs and spires can make a difference. Uh, not everything runs perfectly, but that should um, get you pretty close to being successful in this scenario. So hopefully you guys got something out of this video. If you did, um, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more content like this in the future, um, please consider subscribing to the channel. Once again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.